We're going to find natural logarithms with a table or a calculator, and we're going to graph y equals e to the x. We're at 12.8b, and there's now 21 previous videos for this chapter about exponential and logarithmic functions that are linked in this description. So as I said in the previous video, e is an irrational number, and it occurs naturally in sciences like biology and economics and statistics and stuff like that. And it involves growth or decay. And e is irrational, just like pi. And instead of writing the real long, never-ending decimal, we put 2.7. And we can find natural logarithms by using a table of function values for e to the x or e to the inverse of x, or a table of natural logarithms l and x. So either in the appendix, that's the back of your textbook, or you can go online, you can use a table of function values for e to the x and e to the inverse of x. And it'll look like this. It'll actually say for e to the x and e for the inverse of x. It was table 4 in my book. And the way we read this is, if we're trying to find x, here's the x values, here's the e to the x values, and here's the inverse ones. See? Now, by using a calculator or these tables, we can make graphs of y equals e to the x and y equals log base e of x. So, using a scientific calculator, finding e to the x, base e exponential functions with a scientific calculator, it can be done using that little e to the x key, or the key second and ln. And the ln key may look like an in, but it's really an n. It's an, a lowercase l, okay? It's not, if you don't see this uppercase L. It could look like this with a lowercase l, alright? And you can go online or look in your instruction manual, manual for your scientific calculator and it'll tell you that the e to the x means exp exponentiate this, raise e to the power of x, and that ln key means natural logarithm take the log of. So to find e squared on a scientific calculator you hit 2 and then that little, that little e to the x button, you'll get this nice long decimal that we can round to 7.4. That means our x value is a 2, and our y value is a 7.4. We have an ordered pair that we can graph, don't we? So what we do is we make a table of values, just like we did back in Algebra 1. If you need to have the graph of y equals e to the x, well, we just substitute in values that'll make it true. So... If x is a negative 2, that means we have e to the inverse of 2 as our exponent. We need to look on here for the negative 2. So what we do is we come over here. All right, so remember x is negative 2. So it's going to be the inverse, right? So that means we're looking for an inverse 1. It's going to be 0.1353, see? Can you see that? I always worry about my focus here, and sometimes it's not that great. All right, so we got 0.1353, and we can round that to 0.14, all right? And if x is a negative 1, then the inverse would be 0.368. So if it's a negative 1, we'd be right here. See, here's 1, and then here's the inverse of it. So 0.3679 rounds to 3.68 or 3.7, right? If we want it down to two digits. If it's a 0, well, then that's going to be a 1. If it's a 1, then it's going to be a 2.718. So here's 1, 2.718, and there's even a 3, but we can round it to... 2.7, can't we? If it's 1.5, it's going to be approximately 4.5. If it's a 2, it's going to be approximately a 7.4. See? 7.3891. So we can round it to a 7.4. And now we've got our ordered pairs. See? And now we can graph this. See? If we're doing... An inverse of x, well, we just use that column. We use that column for the inverse of x and find our values. See? 
So if we've got the inverse of x, if x is a negative 2, well then we've got the inverse of that, don't we? That means we've got e squared, which is a 7.4. And if x is a negative 1, then that means we have a 1. See, what's happening is if we've got the inverse right here, if we've got a negative x up here, and this is a negative 1 or a negative 2, it's saying we've got the negative of the negative, and that's how it ended up being a positive. See that? Because it's already got that negative sign. When we add this negative sign to it, it's going to look like this. So that really means we have e squared. It's a positive, isn't it? Or e to the first power. See? We look up each one of these on this table, and we get our ordered pairs. Okay? We substitute it in different values for x to find y. We can even graph y equals e to the half x. Well, all that means is we're multiplying whatever x is by half. So if it was half of 2, then it would be a 1, wouldn't it? If it was half of a 4, it would be a 2. If it was half of 1.5, it would be 0.75. So we can use this and put in our values and say, well, it's half of a negative 2. It's half of a negative 1. It's, that's just going to be 1 because you can't get half a 0, can you? Half of 1 would be a 0 0.5. And then we would look it up on the table according to that value, okay? Now the number log base e of x is abbreviated as ln x. That's how we pronounce it, ln x. And that's the... Uh, natural logarithm of x. ln x equals log base e of x. Okay? And if we have this ln or this lowercase ln key on our calculator, we can find these logarithms directly. We can also use a table of natural logarithms, logarithms ln x, from the appendix in our textbook from the back or from the internet. And natural logarithms don't have characteristics or mantissas. Now we talk about we talked about that in the previous videos. We found the characteristics and mantissas, but natural logarithms don't have them. Common logarithms have characteristics and mantissas because our number system is based on ten. But for any base other than ten, logarithms have neither characteristics nor mantissas. Okay, so we can use a scientific calculator or table to find this natural logarithm of 5.24. This just means log base e of 5.24. So it's saying, what exponent for e is going to make 5.24? And we read this as the natural logarithm. Natural logarithm. So it's almost like the l and the n are reversed. So you can say natural logarithm other way around, right? To remember it, of 5.24. And we look on table 3 that has the ln x, and we look for 5.24. Here's 5.2, and we go across to the 0 0.04 to fit in that 4. See, we got the 5.2. Now we need a 0 0.04 to finish it. So we go to that column for 0 0.04. There goes my focus again. All right. And then we come down to where the 5.2 is, and we get... 1.6563. So we know it's approximately 1.6563. See? That's easy, isn't it? Now this table goes from 1.0 to 9.9 .9 for values that are smaller or larger that are not in the parameters of this. We need to first convert them into scientific notation and then use the fact that 10 equals 2 times 5 because it doesn't have a 10 on the table, if we break 10 into 2 times 5, well, we can find the natural log of 2 and the natural log of 5 on the table. See? So we broke it into smaller increments that were on the table. So if we needed to find the natural logarithm of 750, well, what we do is we write it in scientific notation. We do 7.5 times 10 to the second power. And what that is, when we break it into the 2 and the 5, is the natural logarithm of 7.5 times 2 to the second power times 5 to the second power. 
because that would be 4 times 25. That would be 100, right? That would work. So what we're going to do now is put the natural logarithm of 7.5, and we're going to add it to 2 times the natural log of 2, and we're going to add it to 2 times the natural log of 5. See? So I don't know if you can tell by my colors, but that exponent 2 is a blue, and that's a blue. So that's where we're doing, that's where I'm getting that multiplying it by 2. It's because of the exponent, okay? Now, if you remember from that property that we talked about, the product rule said that if there are factors, we can turn them into add-ins, didn't it? So that's why I did that, all right? That was from video 12.4a. So we had these factors that are, we can now do as add-ins. See, we're adding them. So we look on our table for the natural log is 7.5, all right? And that's right here, and it's 2.0149, okay? So we've got that one. Now we have to find the natural log of 2 and multiply it by 2. So we find the natural log of 2 right here. It's a 0.6931. So we need to multiply that 0 0.6931 times that 2. Then we need to find the natural log of 5, which is a 1.6094 down here. Okay, and we need to multiply it by 2. And we add this one for the natural log of 7.5 to our product of this one and our product of this one. Then we add these all together and get 6.6199 that we can round to 6.62 or 6.6. .6. All right. Try it again. We've got the natural log of 52.4. We break it into scientific notation as 5.24 times 10, because we just moved it over one decimal place, didn't we? We can break that 10 into a 5 and a 2. So that means we have the natural log of 5.24 plus the natural log of 5 plus the natural log of 2. We look on our table, and we find 5.24. We've got 5.2. And then we go to the fourth column to get the 0 0.04, right? Then we find the natural log of 5, which is right here. Then we find the natural log of 2, which is right here. And we add those together and get 3.9588, which rounds to 4.0 or 3.9, however you want to look at it. All right. Now, it's really easy if you're doing this on a calculator because if you want to find the natural log of 0 0.0012, you just hit that LN button key and then put in 0 0.0012, and it's going to give you the answer. And if you want to find the natural log of 100, you hit that key and then put in 100, and it gives you the answer. And for fun, if you put in 2.7182818284, is that number familiar? Yeah, that's E, isn't it? If you put, you hit this key and then put in that decimal, the 11 digits of E, you're going to get a 1. Isn't that cool? Which is really E to the 0 power, isn't it? All right? So, that was a lot of information. I know. I'm hoping it was helpful. Our next video is 12.8C, and we're going to talk about actual word problems involving natural logarithms that are going to talk about decay or growth. And the 21 videos for this chapter are going to be linked in this description for chapter 12. And just to let you know, our last chapter is going to be chapter 13, and we're going to talk about matrices and determinants, okay? So we're almost at the end of chapter 12. We only have a couple more videos to go, and then we're going to be in 13, and then we're going to be done with Algebra 2, all right? And then I'm going to pat you on the back and say, have fun in calculus, all right? So, I will see you next video. Have a great day. Bye.